Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, I will actually talk about uh, what is called abstract Jordan decomposition for elements of semi-simple Lie algebras. So, let us first recall what is this uh, Jordan Chevalier decomposition and then we will actually slowly get into semi-simple Lie algebras. So, recall. So, given operator T of acting on some uh, finite dimensional vector space V. So, we can write T as sum of two operators S and N, where N is being semi simple uh, sorry S is being semi simple and N is being nil potent. Not only that, so this is actually written in a unique way. So, so that this T and S commutes and uh, n and t again commutes and uh, s and n they also commutes ok. So, this additive version of uh, this uh, operator being written as semi simple and nil potent operators will be called uh, uh, Jordan Chevalier decomposition. So, we would like to talk about uh, similar decomposition for any elements of the semi simple Lie algebras ok. So, if we recall from SL2 theory, so what we proved, so if we take this SL2 representation, SL2C acting on let us say V, V being finite dimensional representation of SL2. So, what we have seen, so this means we have a map from SL2C to V, ok. We indeed proved if we take this H and then look at the action of H on capital V. So, this is actually diagonalizable. So, this is what uh, we proved when SL to C acts on this finite dimensional representation, then phi of H acts diagonalizably. Similar to that, phi of X and phi of Y both act nilpotently, okay, nilpotently on this capital V. So, this is what we proved for SL2 representation theory. So, we would like to prove very similar statements uh, for uh, for semi simple Lie algebras. So, let me state that result ok, because uh, then we will not be lost because we will be talking about uh, uh, two different notion of uh, uh, Jordan Chevalier decomposition. So, I do not want you to get uh, confused. So, let me just uh, let write the result and then I will actually explain what we really mean mean ok. So, what we do we take G being semi simple Lie algebra ok. Again we also take a representation of G which we call it phi. So, which is a map from G to G L of V where V is actually one assumes to be finite dimensional representation. So, now we can actually uh, talk about what is called this uh, Jordan decomposition of each images of this uh, elements of G ok. For any x in G, we can talk about phi of x. So, this is as being element of endomorphism of V, this has what is called this uh, Jordan Chevalier decomposition. So, this phi x one can write it as some let me call it uh, again capital S and capital N. So, this phi x can be written as capital S and capital N where S is being semi simple and N is being nil potent. So, this is Jordan Chevalier decomposition of this phi x inside endomorphism of V ok. But suppose if you have already started G as some linear Lie algebra ok. Let us say G is already sitting inside some G L of W ok. So, then we can also talk about uh, uh, Jordan Chevalier decomposition of uh, this element x in G inside G L of W ok. So, you take this x in G as being element of G L of W, you can write x as x s plus x n. This is again Jordan decomposition 
inside your g or your gl of w actually the first conclusion is this both xs and xn so they all will be elements of your g so in particularly we are talking about jordan chevalier decomposition inside g only not only that if we look at this phi x equal to phi xs plus phi n phi xn so this is going to give us some decomposition of phi x into some maps so we will prove that this decomposition will be actually will coincide with the decomposition that you get it from choda chevalier decomposition of phi x inside endomorphism of phi okay so indeed what we want to say in some sense if we know that given element x in g it is already okay nilpotent element inside your linear lie algebra then you can guarantee that it must act nilpotently on any given representation similar to that if given element is already semi simple element in your linear lie algebra then you can guarantee that that element should act nil semi simply on any given finite dimensional representation so this is very similar to what we have in sl2 so here h we know already semi simple as element of sl2 c and x and y both are nilpotent as element of sl2 c but now we what we proved so if you look at the action of h on any finite dimensional representation that should be semi simple similar to that this x and y also act nilpotently on this any finite dimensional representation so indeed we want to actually connect all these dots and then relate this with what is called this adjoint representation which is add g which is isomorphic to g okay so that is our ultimate goal so to do this uh, what is called this abstract jordan decomposition and the usual jordan decomposition so what we will do so to talk about abstract jordan decomposition we will use this adjoint representation okay and then for any abstract semi simple lie algebra it makes sense to look at what is called this add of g which will be isomorphic to g but one advantage for add g that is actually sub algebra of this gl of g okay that way we can talk about uh, usual jordan decomposition of that okay so let's see what we are doing so here is uh, what i want to do you start with g which is semi simple lie algebra so this is just abstract semi simple lie algebra so nothing given so we know that there is this add map which actually maps g to gl of g so indeed <coughs> what is the image of this add g so that is just uh, add of g okay we have seen that this add of g is indeed sitting inside what is called the derivations of g okay which is sitting inside gl of g so now for given element x in g one can look at add x so which is an element of add g so since add g is sitting inside endomorphism of g okay one can talk about jordan chevalier decomposition for add x so which we denoted by capital s and capital n so this is jordan chevalier decomposition indeed what we will prove so we will prove in a minute we will prove that add g will be equal to the derivation g and derivation g must contain all its elements semi simple part 
are nil potent parts. Okay. So, in particularly if we assume this result then this ad x you have written as s plus n this is the usual Jordan decomposition. So, then this s and n both will lie inside the derivation g, but derivation g is nothing but add g. So, that would imply that this s is inside add g and n is inside add g. Now, g 2 add g is actually 1 to 1 correspondence. So, that means there exists x s in g and x n is in g such that add x s will be equal to capital S and add x n will be capital N. So, now if you go back to what happens inside g x is written as x s plus x n and add x is written as add x s plus add x n. Okay. Now, the way we have chosen x s and x n so that this add x equal to add x s plus add x n becomes the usual Jordan Chevalier decomposition. Okay. So, in this case we actually say that this x s plus x n is the abstract Jordan decomposition of this x. Okay. So, this decomposition is called abstract decomposition of Jordan Chevalier decomposition of x. So, note that this x s and x n both must be unique because if we uh, because the usual Jordan decomposition of add x will be unique and the add map is being 1 to 1 correspondence. So, we will get uh, x s x n being unique. Okay. So, these uh, to define even the abstract Jordan decomposition we need this fact couple of facts. One is derivation of g contains all its elements semi simple and nil potent parts and uh, add g is actually equal to derivation g when uh, g is semi simple. Okay. So, this is what allows us to define what is called uh, uh, the abstract Jordan Chevalier decomposition. So, later we will see that if we start with g being uh, a linear Lie algebra which is also semi simple then there is a usual Jordan decomposition for each element of g. Okay. So, in that uh, sense okay, we can ask this question whether uh, this uh, there is this usual Jordan decomposition and uh, there is this abstract Jordan decomposition whether they coincide or not. So, it is a fact they coincide. So, indeed uh, we do not get a two different decomposition. So, that is uh, that is a beauty of uh, this entire theory. Okay. So, before uh, getting forward uh, uh, we will actually prove the facts that I already promised. So, let us uh, write it as a proportion. So, we take g being finite dimensional complex semi simple Lie algebra. So, then what one can prove? We can prove that the add of g must be same as derivations of g. So, this is just uh, follows from the fact that one can talk about uh, uh, usual Jordan decomposition for element, element of derivations of g. Okay. So, let us see how one can prove. So, since uh, this add maps uh, g to this add g 1 to 1 correspondence okay, one can add g is also actually ideal inside derivation g one can view this derivation g as module for add g okay, that is what we are going to do. So, note that so this is the computation we already did. So, if we take the bracket delta comma add x. 
So, then what we get is just add of delta of x and this is uh, true for any delta in derivation g and x in g. Okay. This identity is something that I already checked. So, if you are not comfortable you should check again. So, now look at this add map from g to this derivations of g. Okay. So, now the add g is an ideal inside derivations of g. Okay. And this is actually true for any Lie algebra, there is nothing special about semi simple. So, now uh, if you look at the center of g, so that is being solvable ideal that must be 0. So, that implies g must be isomorphic to add g. Okay. So, that is something we have for semi simple Lie algebra. So, now what we are going to do, so we take m to be this add g, so which is sitting inside the derivations of g. So, now the killing form of g okay, is being non-degenerate tells us that the killing form on add g is also non-degenerate. Okay. So, in particularly the dimension of this derived algebra, so that will be equal to the dimension of this m and then dimension of this m perp okay, because the killing form restricted to m will be the killing form on m okay, and that is non-degenerate. So, we get this dimension matches. So, to prove that add g is equal to derivation g, it is enough to prove that the dimension of this m perp is 0. Okay. So, it is enough to prove. that this add of sorry the dimension of dimension of this m purpose 0. So, m is being ideal. So, the killing form is actually on m is the restriction of the killing form on derivation of yeah, derivation of g. So, now we can use this uh, Cartan's uh, second criterion. Okay. So, that says that the killing form on m. So, this is actually non-degenerate. So, in particularly if you look at this m intersection m perp. Okay, so, that must be 0 because m intersection m perp that will lie inside the radical of the killing form. Okay, but the radical of the killing form is being 0 that would imply that m intersection m perp is 0. And now, if you think about it, so then this will imply that the bracket of m and m perp that must be 0, because the bracket of m and m perp that would that will lie inside m intersection m perp. So, now what we do? We take some delta inside m perp and add x inside m. So, then we know that the bracket delta comma add x, so that is 0, but the bracket delta add x is nothing but add of delta x. So, this is being 0, but add is being 1 to 1 map that would imply immediately that delta x is 0. So, now we prove that delta x is 0 for all x in g. Okay. So, that implies delta must be 0 as a map. So, that means m perp is 0. So, that proves that m is same as the derivation of g. Okay. So, this is uh, something repeatedly uses the Cartan second criterion and so on. Okay. But indeed what we have proved if we take g being finite dimensional complex semi simple Lie algebra then add of g must be equal to derivation of g. And it is a simple exercise uh, to show that uh, given any derivation, if you take its uh, uh, Jordan Chevalier decomposition, the usual Jordan Chevalier decomposition, uh, then both uh, uh, that uh, semi simple part as well as nilpotent part they will be again derivation. So, that I will leave it as exercise. So, I will just state it as exercise. So, you start with G being complex Lie algebra. 
So, now this is nothing to do with semi simplicity, it is just uh, true for any complex Lie algebra. Uh, take G uh, sorry delta being element of derivations of G. Now, since derivations of G sits inside endomorphism of G, we can talk about delta is being equal to delta S plus delta N. So, this is the usual usual Jordan Chevalli decomposition. So, now what is our claim? So, then prove that this delta S and delta N both are actually derivations of G. Okay. So, it is enough to prove it for only delta S because delta N being difference between delta and delta S we get uh, delta N for free okay, because derivations of G is a subspace of endomorphism of G. And again this is a simple exercise uh, because if you take uh, uh, V lambda being so, let us say G lambda being lambda at, uh, uh, generalized eigenspace. So, this is uh, lambda at generalized eigenspace. So, then what one can prove if we take the bracket between this G lambda and G mu. Okay. So, this is lambda at generalized eigenspace with respect to delta. So, then you can see that the bracket g lambda g mu this has to be subset of g of lambda plus mu. So, now use this information uh, to prove that delta s must be actually uh, derivation. Okay. So, I will leave it to you to check. So, now using this fact you can see that uh, for any uh, element of the derivation of g if we take this uh, usual Jordan Chevalier decomposition both the semi simple part and nil potent part they are elements of this derivations of G. So, now if we combine all the results that we have. So, if G is semi simple, so then we have that add G being equal to derivation G. So, now given any X in G we can talk about add X being equal to add Xs plus add x n this is the usual Jordan Chevalier decomposition. If we take this as usual Jordan decomposition then we say x is being equal to x s plus x 1 is the abstract Jordan decomposition. Okay. So, indeed uh, we will prove that uh, if we start with uh, this abstract Jordan decomposition even for any linear uh, Lie algebra which is semi simple okay, we can talk about usual Jordan decomposition for that uh, particular linear Lie algebra. For example, SL 2 C okay. if we take SL 2 C this is inside M 2 of C. So, given element z inside S L 2 C, one can talk about z is being equal to some z s plus z n. This is the let us say usual Jordan decomposition. So, this makes sense because the trace of z is being 0 uh, implies that trace of this z s is also 0 because trace of any nilpotent operator is 0. So, that implies that both z s and z n they are element of this SL 2 C. So, the linear Lie algebra which you start with that may be closed under already the usual Jordan decomposition. So, in that sense we can also talk about what is called this abstract Jordan decomposition that being like add z you write it as some add z dash plus add z n dash. So, now the question is whether that abstract Jordan decomposition coincides with this uh, uh, usual Jordan decomposition that we already have. Indeed, it coincides. So, that is a big theorem. So, let me state it here. You start with uh, <coughs> what is called semi simple Lie algebra. Semi simple Lie algebra. And let us say 
you have a map theta from G to G L V. Okay. So, this is a representation be a representation of G. So, now we have what is called abstract Jordan decomposition for any element of G. Okay. So, for x in G you can talk about what is called this x s plus x n which is abstract Jordan decomposition. So, what is this abstract Jordan decomposition? You look at add x then add x s plus add x n becomes the usual Jordan decomposition for add x. So, that is the definition of abstract Jordan decomposition. So, now then so then what we want to prove we can look at what is called this theta x being equal to theta x s plus theta x n. Okay. So, we want to claim that this is indeed the Jordan decomposition of theta of x. This is the usual Jordan decomposition, Jordan Javli decomposition of theta of x. So, this is actually a big theorem. So, in particularly if for some reason if you know that given element is already semi simple, add semi simple, then it must act semi simply on any finite dimensional representation. Okay for some reason given element is already add nilpotent. So, then it must act nilpotently on any given representation. So, this is the corollary. Okay. So, if given x in g is add semi simple. So, then x must act semi simply on any given finite dimensional representation of G. Similarly, if x is in G is add nilpotent that is add x is semi simple. Similarly, add x is nilpotent. Then <coughs> X, x must act nilpotently on any finite dimensional representation of G. So, this is very very important corollary this is uh, indeed only true for semi simple uh, Lie algebras. So, the proof is again like understanding the definition of uh, both abstract and uh, usual Jordan decomposition. So, let us go through very slowly and then uh, try to prove this statement. This is a very very important uh, statement. Okay. So, if we start with some element x, so we just say we write it as x equal to x s plus x n. Okay. So, first of all we can actually go modulo the kernel and then we can assume uh, this theta being actually injective. So, let us not worry about it let us just work with theta it is not a problem. So, let us take theta so which is a map from G to G L of V. Okay. So, we have this kernel theta. So, then G modulo kernel theta. So, this is being isomorphic to image theta. So, this must be semi simple Lie algebra. Okay. One can talk about abstract Jordan decomposition of elements of image theta. Okay. So, there is no issue with that. So, image theta is already sitting inside G L of V. Okay. So, now if we take x being x s plus x n. So, let us say x is in G. So, this is the abstract Jordan decomposition. So, then what happens? It is not that hard to see 
if we take this theta of x. So, that must be equal to theta of x s plus theta of x n. So, this becomes abstract Jordan decomposition of theta of x. This becomes abstract Jordan decomposition for theta of x. So, how one proves this? One can directly check what are all the properties that you required. For example, uh, so what is this uh, definition of x being x s plus x n is abstract Jordan decomposition. So, x equal to x s plus x n. So, this is abstract Jordan decomposition. So, this implies if you look at add x then add x is being add x s plus add x n. So, this is the usual Jordan decomposition. Okay. If you look at uh, this if you apply theta and then you can see that you get from this equation add of theta of x is equal to add of theta of x s plus add of theta of x n. Okay. So, now uh, you can see that, so this is actually the usual Jordan decomposition of this add theta x. Okay. So, this is something I will leave it to you to check. So, check that this is usual Jordan decomposition of this uh, add theta x. So, now because this is actually uh, usual Jordan decomposition of r theta of x and uh, this is uh, uniquely defined uh, because uh, all these are inside the image theta. So, you can see that we are talking about Jordan decomposition inside the image theta. So, that implies that this theta of x is equal to theta of x s plus theta of x n. So, this is the abstract Jordan decomposition for theta of x. Okay. So, now this actually tells us that if we prove if we have g being subalgebra of g l of v. Okay. So, then for given x in g if x equal to x s plus x n is the abstract Jordan decomposition. If it uh, coincides with the usual Jordan decomposition then we are done because any abstract Jordan decomposition of this theta of x. So, which is inside this image theta which is like g dash let us say g dash. So, then the abstract Jordan decomposition of this element theta of x of g dash coincides with the usual Jordan decomposition of theta of x. So, that is what we wanted to prove. Okay. So, that is the main theorem for us. So, this is coincide with the usual one. So, that means for any linear Lie subalgebra which is a semi simple linear Lie subalgebra. So, what we need to prove? We need to prove that the abstract Jordan decomposition coincides with. So, we need to prove that the abstract Jordan decomposition coincides with the usual Jordan decomposition. Now, uniqueness will take care of rest. Okay. So, how one can prove this? So, let us say x equal to x s plus x n this is the abstract Jordan decomposition. Then we need to prove that this is the usual Jordan decomposition, but 
by definition you can uh, see that if we start with the usual Jordan decomposition okay let us say x equal to s plus n this is the usual Jordan decomposition n is nil potent would imply immediately that add n is nil potent. Similarly, s is being semi simple would imply that add s is semi simple. So, in particularly if you look at add x as a map on g l of v you get add x equal to add s map on g l of v plus add n map on g l of v. So, this becomes actually the usual Jordan decomposition the usual Jordan decomposition. So, now if you restrict this to g, so then you can easily see that. So, this also becomes if you restrict to g, this also becomes the usual Jordan decomposition. So, that means this x equal to s plus n is actually the abstract Jordan decomposition. So, now uniqueness of uh, these Jordan decompositions will actually tell you that the abstract Jordan decomposition coincides with the uh, usual Jordan decomposition. Okay. It is basically understanding the definitions so nothing else. So, but it proves what what is important is that uh, the statement. So, if we start with abstract Jordan decomposition of this x and then look at any representation of g acting on some finite dimensional vector space v, then if you take the image of this abstract Jordan decomposition which is theta of x equal to theta of x s plus theta of x n, then that must be the Jordan Chevalier decomposition of it affects the in the usual sense. So, what is important is that if you take add semi simple elements that should act semi simply on any finite dimensional representation of G. Similarly, any add nil potent element should act as nil potently on any finite dimensional representation. So, these two are very very important uh, corollaries which will be used uh, later in developing this uh, the theory of semi simple algebras. Okay, I will stop here. In the next class, I will actually start with the structure theory of semi simple Lie algebras. So, we will use all the results uh, that we have learned so far. So, I recommend you to actually revise the results uh, before uh, starting the next lecture. Thank you very much. Thanks.